All right, team. So, one weird lecture before you get a break, because you didn't have a break or something, right? It's pretty strange. Okay. You got to vote, democracy. Actually, I had a few new words. So, one was, um, I tweeted these, and they were, you know, resounding successes, maybe one favorite. This is kind of what we do. Um, I should give up. Uh, well, it's cockistocracy, right? We had to invent that word basically as soon as we invented the word democracy, um, which is rule, uh, rule by the worst. Kaka having, yeah, so K-A-K, -K, good Greek word. And then there are all sorts of ocracies, right? But then I had um, kaka democracy, which would be show, right? Would be, the, would be the word there, drama for show. Just say that. And then uh, Garbo flamocracy, which would be dumpster fire, dumpster fire ocracy. So, anyway, at least we can make up new words. So, um, I'm gonna, we're going to do some random bipartite stuff. And so, I've got little uh, things to draw. So, we'll get to that. Um, I'm going to have to finish this little bit of stuff about generating functions, which I know you're enjoying so much. <laughs> um, but we'll do it. It's part of the of what complex networks is about, and then we'll get back to all sorts of other things. Okay, so, but uh, there will be a little bit of it in the bi random bipartite piece. We will do it. Is that making a sad little noise? Oh, I know what it is. Yeah. That's, not, that's yours. <coughs> not that it matters, but anyway. Okay, you poor little guy. Is it better? Okay. Now it's all confused. All right. Uh, okay. So, had a few things here. So, first of all, I know you all will be very familiar with this game that just happened. So, New Zealand beat England in a fantastic one-day international. And Russ Taylor, just a total champion, 181. Most of that on, on uh, one leg. Incredible. So, we can talk about that if you want. Um, it's pretty great. I just want to, I have this here, I just wanted to, I, I gave a talk at Davis, and, and I didn't have this slide in at the end, and I, I realized I should have, but I just want to say again, I mean, this is a pretty amazing study, and it came out in December. Some of you weren't in Pucks last year, but, you know, I have this section that's growing on stories, and it, one of the culminating pieces we have now is this, this study, or that I sort of, I'm going to feature, um, uh, just to say again, it's a Filipino hunter-gatherer society where, and, and I think this is, this is also interesting, the people uh, who went in to study this group weren't looking for this at all. So they were trying to find out a number of things, and one was, you know, who do you value the most in your society? It turned out to be the storytellers and not the hunters, right, which was sort of what they presumed. Uh, and this, right, storytellers in, in, in this particular society, you know, they have many stories, not just sort of fun, of course, stories of, about life and death, and, and many of the stories are about collective cooperation, you know, right, boy or cry wolf type things, right, so behave well so that we can all function as a team. But the extra piece in here, so the stories that they tell survive, right, that they get passed on, this is a big, big part of culture, but the storytellers also have more children than anyone else. So, in, including the, the hunters. So, there's a, that's pretty good. The gift of the gab is being um, transmitted. So, that was pretty profound. So, I've talked a lot about survival of things, but that's a, that's a big deal. Okay. Um, small world networks. So, we've talked a lot about the six degrees thing. It happens all the time. I'm sure you get to say it regularly. Uh, this is, uh, so, I was talking to a couple of people who have seen you, right? Um, great computer science. Um, place they come from CMU. So there's a place called Park Mansions here. This is CMU. This is Shenley Park, which is a beautiful part of Pittsburgh. And this is just this isolated little building here. It's very old, and uh, it's, it's still operating. You know, it's, it's going to sound ridiculous, but it has the uh, people running the elevators and stuff like that. Right? It's very old school. Right? And so my parents-in-law lived, moved back here for a little while. They're from here originally, and they lived in here, and it cost nothing to buy at some point because everything was not going well. Anyway, there was this other character in there uh, that my mother-in-law met one day in the elevator for the first time, Fred Rogers, right? And, and he said, he, he did, he said, welcome to the neighborhood. 
Anyway, so people don't, a lot of people don't know, but he, he lived here and, um, you know, just recorded around the corner. There was a big PBS thing on Fred Rogers recently and lots of love. Sarah Silverman, for some reason, is on this. Like, it's a strange blend of humans. Anyway, um, so I just want to mention that. Uh, and another little small thing is uh, Danforth's uh, grandfather delivered Fred, the children of Fred Rogers and his wife, so, um, because they're from Pittsburgh. So all these little people. So there's a picture of Danforth meeting Fred Rogers when Danforth's tiny and like, Danforth's just exploding with happiness. That's worth, worth getting him to show you that. All right, 